Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we're gonna get a double here. We're gonna get a double here. Come on, turn around. Turn around. Oh, there's a bunch down there all of a sudden. I'm fighting one. There's two more swimming around. And they both look bigger. You're watching Uncut Angling, which is made possible by Travel Manitoba, Alumacraft Boats, Yamaha Motor Canada, Shimano Reels, G Loomis Rods, FXR Outdoor Apparel, Humbert Electronics, and Minkota Motors. This episode is presented by Travel Manitoba and filmed in Manitoba's northern region. How are you doing? Welcome to Barbie Lake. I'm just about 30 minutes north of the Paw Manitoba, still staying over at Evergreen Resort. So many amazing ice fishing opportunities here. And hopefully today we find some big rainbows, possibly some nice brookies. I know there's a ton of smaller brookies in the lake right now. What I've got along the shore here, and you can't really see it because we've just got a lot of fresh snow, but there is a grass line of pencil reeds. And whenever there's pencil reeds, you know there's some firmer bottom. Typically, pencil reeds grow where there's a little bit of harder substrate, some gravel or whatever. So I'm gonna start drilling right tight into shore here and just drill out farther and see where I can come into a, a transition. So I'm just gonna use the aqua view, pointed straight down and see exactly what the bottom structure is because if I can get where the transition is from rock to mud, rock to weed, weed to mud, I wanna find some sort of an edge which is more important than the exact depth that you're fishing in. Right here, we're in the pencil reeds, but I can see rock mixed in with the pencil reeds, as suspected. So that's gonna be way too shallow because it's just thick pencil reeds. Okay, so I move out to here, and we are still in the pencil reeds. They're not quite as thick. Okay, so maybe these are all gonna be too shallow. And so we're out of the pencil reeds and now there's just a, a layer of gross looking vegetation on the bottom, but I still see the odd rock. And I suspect if I go one further, then it's just all weeds. Vegetation matted everywhere. So what I wanna do is I wanna come back to this zone, the main transition area that we're gonna set the shack up on. You can see right there, we're lined up perfectly, right on that edge where the rock rubble kind of just fades into that weed mat bottom. So this is a perfect little fish highway here. Bo Dangles. Bo Dangles. Oh my goodness, double. Oh my goodness, that was insane. <laughs> I had one go for both rods. Wish I could have handled that better, wow. That was crazy, a pair of them just came in and charged. Look at this one bulldogging down there. Keep coming, ooh yeah, that's a nice rainbow. Look at that gorgeous football rainbow. Came in in a pair, they each cranked one of those Fake jackal minnows. That's gonna be very close to a Manitoba master angler. We will check and see. Nope, not quite enough for 20 inches, but quite great for a first fish. People have asked multiple times why I pull my line out instead of opening the bale. And I'm just constantly checking the whole system. I'm checking all my knots. I'm checking the reel, the drag. I'm just checking that everything's smooth. And when you open your bale, you create an opportunity where a loop could form or things could get wonky. So I just do this to make sure everything's always tight and ready to go. This is a 36 inch hot rod that I'm using with both of these setups. Very soft. I think Eric designed these for trout specifically. So this is really ideal for keeping these fish hooked. I'm using the same thing on both of my rods and that's just a small 1 ounce jig with a jackal cross tail shad. It's a four inch bait that I've trimmed in half and just used the thin tail section. And I'm fishing it with a three foot section of eight pound fluorocarbon. But if you go too light, you'll get more bites, but you'll break fish off. If you go any heavier than eight, you'll probably get less bites. And then it's attached to my main line, which is 10 pound Power Pro Ice Tech with an FG knot. But you could use a lot of different knots as long as you're comfortable with it and you've got experience tying it because if you're not 
totally comfortable with tying that knot, I would just use a very small swivel to connect to your fluorocarbon leader. And then the only thing that I'm varying in my presentation is that one of them I'm leaving completely still, just setting it on the ice beside me here. Whereas with the other one, I'm working it very aggressively. So it's a classic two-pronged approach for these big rainbows, and I can watch everything unfold in front of me on the AquaView underwater camera that I've got set up. Oh my goodness. Got him on these. Yes. Oh, he went for the active bait, and then he turned around and grabbed the still one. That was aggression. This guy's going crazy. Look at the battle. I don't have an idea how big it is, but it is fighting like crazy. Wow. Jeez. And here he comes. Here he comes. Oh, it's going to be another 19 incher. Yep, roughly. Bye, girl. Or guy. I'm good. I'm good in case anybody's wondering. I'm good. Looks like a big one. That looks like a big one. Oh my goodness. He's got the option of the moving bait or the stationary bait. Oh, please take one of them. He'll have to scream, but he could loop around. That was a bigger fish, for sure. This is a smaller fish, maybe? Maybe not. Oh, what happened? Get the fish down there all of a sudden. All of a sudden there's multiple fish. This one's cruising straight towards my set line. But he didn't want it. You see nothing for so long or maybe just some small brookies and then all of a sudden there's some big rainbows on scene. Hello? Hello? Oh, that looks like a nice one. There's two of them. Is the other one going to eat the other bait? Oh, we got a double! We got a double! I don't know which one's bigger. We got one right there. I'm going to let that one go because that one doesn't look super big. Oh, this other one's big. Oh my goodness, I almost lost the rod. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is hectic. This one is big. Oh, this one's big. Oh my goodness. Come on, nice and easy, nice and easy. Oh, this is a giant on this rod. Giant that ate the still. Come on, come up the hole. Come up the hole. Oh yeah, come on, oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh yeah, it's a freaking giant. Just finished the double off with this one. Oh my goodness, look at the size difference. There's the first one. I'm gonna unhook him real quick. Drop him down. There he goes. And now, I'm just gonna give him a quick drink here. Master Angler is 20 inches. This one, wow, 25 inches. Oh man, that's an amazing Barbie Lake giant buck rainbow. Gonna get him back in the water. Un Unbelievable! Did you see that fish? Did you see that rod grab? Meanwhile, big bad buck Bo was on the other rod. Incredible, incredible doubleheader. Like Barbie Lake, I love you. And I have just the thing to celebrate. Yep, that's ice cream. So on this side, it says cotton candy ice cream. And on this side, Mmm. Mmm. Whoa. That tastes way too much like cotton candy. All right. Back to Evergreen Resort. I got a lake trout show. Mostly filmed. Mmm. I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure if I have a lake trip show mostly filmed, half filmed, or not at all filmed. We'll see. Manitoba, Canada's heart beats. Looks like a trout. Oh, it's a nice trout. Oh, yeah. Look at the face on that thing. Look at the face. Oh, come on up. Please come up, please.